they, they have a system of psychopaths, the private club, where you don't get up there at the, at the higher levels of power unless you're one of them. It all goes together. I mean, the movement of the arms, the movement of you know, wars, the movement of these little children, the movement of the sex slave, the movement of the drugs, the movement of the money laundering. Uh, it, it all goes together. Uh, and it's a huge, huge, trillion, multi-trillion dollar operation. When you talk about stuff like this, I mean, it, it's horrible as, as pedophilia is, you better back it up. You have to back it up with some pretty decent sources. And, and so a, a lot of my research involves finding solid sources that are credible. That's a huge part of this whole enterprise that I'm doing. Welcome to Business Game Changers. I'm Sarah Westall. Today we have a really serious subject and we're going to be talking about pedophilia and the global trafficking network of children. It's a really difficult subject to talk about, but it's something that's really important for us to talk about. It's important that people know the truth. No matter how hard the truth is, knowing the truth allows us to stop anything bad that's going on or to change our situation and make our communities better. So today I'm bringing on Joaquim Hagopian, and he's a West Point graduate. He was an, an officer in the Army, and then he went back and got his master's degree in clinical psychology and ended up working with a lot of victims of pedophilia and really understood how they felt and what they went through. And then he started getting involved and becoming a journalist and a writer and investigating this work. And now he's writing this book, and it's probably the most complete documented look at pedophilia that's ever been created. And he's looking at the history of it, and he's looking at what's going on today. And it's a sobering look at how many of our children, 800,000 just in North America, and they're thinking over 8 million worldwide per year, that are underage put into the child sex trafficking ring, of which a percentage of those are used by an elite group of pedophilia, satanic abuse rituals. And he will talk about what that means and how prevalent it is. Again, it's a disturbing subject, so I wanna warn you that if this is something hard for you to listen to, that you want to switch to another channel because this will, we will not back off on the difficult subjects here. It, we talk a little bit about the details of what's going on with the children, which again, is hard to, to hear. But again, it's important to hear. We also do an additional 14 minute segment for my patrons only. So if you are a patron of my channel, you will get an additional 14 minutes of interview talking about what he believes is behind their reason for doing it. He believes that they may be manipulated by an outside force, which is really interesting. So he at least explores that idea and some of the facts that he's finding about that. At least they believe they are being implemented by an outside force. So he's going to he's gonna talk about that. So let's get into the interview now with Joaquim Hagopian. Hi, Joaquim. Welcome to the program. Hi, Sarah. Good to be here. Yeah, thank you so much. I know this is a really hard topic, so I really appreciate that you're spending time with me to discuss it and are spending time doing the research on it. I, I can imagine it's difficult to um, to do that research. And do you find at times that you have to put it aside a little bit before you get back into it? Definitely. Uh, it's such a dark and heavy topic, pedophilia. Uh, People run away from it a lot of times if you even bring it up. Uh, so yeah, you, you need to get some air and some light and, and some uh, love and, and just you know the good moments of life you have to be a balance. Uh, otherwise, if you, if you just submerge yourself too deeply into it, it can really wreak some psychological havoc in your mind and your emotions because it is such a devastating 
terrible, you know, topic of what humans do to other humans. It's just unbelievable. Well, it's hard for us to even imagine it because I can't, you know, I won't let myself mentally go there. And that's why it's hard to, <laughs> well, I am now mentally going there. But in general, you just won't let yourself even think about things like that. But yeah. based on that, let's talk about what your background is and how you got motivated to research this issue of pedophilia and sexual abuse. Sure. Well, my background is uh, my dad was 20 years on submarines during World War II in the Korean War, and he had kind of indoctrinated me to follow in his footsteps in the military. So I marched off to the height of the Vietnam War to West Point. And uh, so I, I had a little trouble there in that I had a mind of my own and was not submitting to this uh, robot kind of uh, brainwash that they do there. And, uh, and so I got into some trouble and was involved in a court case where they ran up my demerits in the last two weeks of the term and I ended up exceeding the allowable amount. And I had to take them to court for failure to allow due process of law, one of our precious constitutional rights that unfortunately is not adhered to all that much as, but as much as it was back in my day at the academy. Thank God I was able to get back in uh, in the district court in New York. But, you know, from the beginning, I've always been an individual, and I'm not willing to give up my soul or my individuality to the group mind. I, I always think for myself. I think critically. I don't. I challenge authority. Uh, so, you know, in many ways, I suppose I was not very well suited for the life of a military warrior as my dad was. Um, but I have found that I am a spiritual warrior. I uh, am a fighter for truth and justice. And uh, after the military, I, I mean, I was an officer for a while. Although I was, you know, ever since I was blackballed from my court case, you know, they had an in for me and they gave me Article 15 as an officer. It was pretty bad, but I did manage to eventually extricate myself from the military. I went to school in psychology and became a licensed therapist, a marriage family therapist in California, in Los Angeles. And I work with pedophile victims, mostly uh, fathers, stepfathers, uncles, uh, family friends, grandfathers, this kind of stuff. Uh, and I work with uh, youth and adolescents mostly throughout a 27-year career in mental health. And, uh, and so I, I've always had a compassion for other people, and I'm able to have empathy where I'm able to understand and, and feel what they feel. So I spent the next many, many years uh, working with uh, the youth, and uh, I fought with the child welfare system, the foster care system, the children's court, the uh, Protective Services, the Los Angeles County Department of Family and Service, Children's Services, uh, they made bonehead decisions that were not in the best interest of my clients, the children. Uh, and so I, I was constantly clashing with the system there, too. It's a very broken system, and, and unfortunately, the, the kids are really victims in that system. Uh, there are good social workers. I'm not like, you know, putting a whole blanket statement on everybody that's in that field or, or line of work, but, but I, I found that, that the kids were not being taken care of properly, be it in the foster homes or in the children's courts. Uh, they were taking away uh, kids from biological family members that did not deserve to have their kids taken away. Um, and they were put in, in, in jeopardy in uh, home environments where they were not safe. And I would be trying to get into the courtroom to explain the situation that my client was in, and the judge wouldn't even let me. No. They wouldn't let the therapist of a child that they're making these life and death decisions over, wouldn't even let me in the courtroom. Uh, it was a, it, it was a, it's just a, Wholly broken, corrupt system. Well, my understand, my understanding is that over fifty percent of the children in that system are sexually abused, 
and that That's it's right. just ripe for trafficking and taking children and abusing them. It's one of the many components to the whole global network of child trafficking is the procure and the agencies that place children in jeopardy into the basically the, the child trafficking pipeline. It, it's a conduit for that. So um, dur during your time as a clinical psychologist, did you get to um, interview people that are part of the trafficking rings and the satanic abuse as well? You know, I wish I had that experience, uh, but I didn't. Uh, I worked with families. I worked with the kids in the juvenile system, uh, foster care system, um, and in communities. But I, I, I never had the opportunity really to, to get into that realm of, of it. Uh, so it was all very peripheral to me. Uh, but I did work a lot with the pedophile victim. Um, so, um, so you got yeah, to was, see you got to see the inside of the child welfare system, which is extremely broken. Yes, yes, and they're one of the guilty parties that that uh, promote child trafficking, unfortunately. And of course, you know, I don't want to make these. You'll hear me make these statements, and and I have to like, you know, qualify it. I'll, I'll qualify it now, and then. Each person can understand that not everybody that's in that agency or organization is the evil Satanist, you know. Um, however, in all of these domains that are players in this system, and the child welfare is, is one of many, law enforcement, the court system, the government, be it from the national down to the county, um, the education system, uh, I mean, they're all part of it. And the people, and, and, and basically the FBI and the CIA are the real culprits. That they're, they're the ones that are actually doing it. CIA more than anything, and military intelligence too, and the FBI. But law enforcement at that national level, they're the perpetrators, they're the main movers. They're responsible. They're the manipulators, engineers, and the handlers, and all of that. So when you're saying national, are the local guys pretty good? It's just more than national? Well, unfortunately, they, they have a system of psychopaths, the private club, where you don't get up there at the, at the higher levels of power unless you're one of them. And so basically, yes, at the higher level, the national level, yes. Uh, the leaders of all those main organizations, they're all, I'll tell you, they're all pedophiles, almost to the man and woman. They're pedophiles or they're compromised. They're blackmailed and compromised. It's one or the other. If, they're, if they got power in the system, they are compromised for their hardcore pedophiles. You know, it's just like, that's the way it is. So why has it grown so much in the last few decades? Or at least that's what I'm being told. We've always had terrible things like this, in which you can talk about a little bit in the history of it. But why has it grown so much over the last few decades? I, th I think there's several reasons involved. I think, one, it is, it is growing. Uh, and the network has become larger and more sophisticated. They've got more buffers to seal it from uh, from being busted and, and protecting and shielding it. Uh, and, and I think also the technology. Uh, we've seen basically a, a parallel process with advancing technology that's used in the elite's favor to control and, and to basically engage in this kind of operation. Uh, and we also see the power structure of all of these entities that are part of it uh, become more corrupt and, and more evil, uh, more dominated by this Lucifer worshiping cult kind of uh, pedophile crowd. Uh, so it's, it's a parallel process. Uh, many factors are involved, but those, those are the major ones. So uh, they've, and, 
so they and we're finding out more. I mean, they're not able to hide stuff like they were able to before, you know. So, so there's, it's a, a, there's many. So it's a combination of us just being more aware, but also they have gotten a stronghold in position of power that has made their network much more powerful and able to do this. Yes. And that's why we're seeing a systematic breakdown of everything in our society because they're the ones in power. Yes. Because we're seeing they it across the board. Yes, yeah, across the board, in every domain, you know, from finances, economic, banking, industry, corporations, government, uh, law enforcement, courts, all of it together, entertainment, all of it, media, it's all in it together. And the people at the top in all those industries are the other, they're the enemy, basically. Uh, you know, so... Uh, well, okay, well, so let's... let's Let's get into some more details because I want you to um, give us some evidence of that as we go along. So people, because it's one thing to for us to be able to say they are this, you know, and then another thing to be able to prove it because it's really irresponsible of us to come onto a show and say that all our leaders are pedophiles and Satanists without saying, okay, let's qualify it and say these these certain people are, or they're compromised, and this is the proof behind it. Because if we don't do that, then we are inciting violence and, and not being uh, responsible. And so what our goal is, is just to clean things up and to have a better and safer place for our community. So let's get into some of the history of this. And then as we go, I'm hoping you can provide some evidence and proof, and then we can get into today's, what's going on today with some evidence and proof. Is that okay? Mm -hmm. Sure. Okay. So let's, your book dives into the history of child sex abuse and brings it up to the present day. Your book describes how the very top elites are actively participating in these practices. Okay. What specifically are they doing? Well, are, are you talking about what they are doing to the children? Yeah. I mean, what are they doing to the children and how are they doing it? Okay. They're sodomizing kids. They're in every which way. They're cutting the kids up. There, there's a lot of occult sacrifice, ritual of sacrifice abuse uh, where they scare the children with torture and, and, and as they actually have sex with them. And there is a thing called adrenochrome where they get this rush and this sense of power that comes from these debaucherous, horrible acts against children. And, uh, and it, it actually draws demonic forces, or at least they believe that they gain access through their occult ritual activities to these demonic forces. And, uh, and it all kind of goes together, the violent acts of what they're doing to the children. I don't want to get into the too graphic of it, but because it's just, you know, maddening to even think about for more than a second. Um, but that's what they regularly engage in. They're very different from us. They're basically born and bred as psychopaths. Uh, or they're excommunicated from their families if they have a conscience. Uh, you know, and I'm sure that there's probably a few, and we're talking about, you know, there, there are certain bloodlines. You've probably heard, of, yeah, there's been quite a bit of, uh, you know, material that's been written about the, the, they call 13 bloodlines, but I think there's more than that, but, you know, the Rothschilds and the Rockefellers, you know, and there's Astors and Kennedys, and there's a, you know, a number of them, and they have held this power for a long, long time. They've been in the church, they've infiltrated the church, uh, particularly the Catholic church, uh, and, as well as the government, and they've maintained power uh, for centuries, actually, many of them. Uh, you know, so the do, they, do they abuse their own children to, to get them into the cult-like behaviors? I believe that the ones like the Bushes, yes, I, I'm 100% sure that they actually engage in all these horror acts uh, 
as part of their upbringing uh, to bring them along. I mean, you must have heard of the MK Ultra and the Monarch programs that the CIA and the military intelligence have been running for since the basically since the Operation Paperclip when they brought over all the Nazi scientists uh, that had been experimenting uh, on the the Jews in the concentration camps. Uh, so that's where it all started. All this, you know, mind control, and torture, inducing multiple personalities, uh, dissociative disorder. Now, uh, it's all systematic. It's all part of the system. They refined their torture, sexual abuse system uh, to uh, basically cause dissociation, where they have people that are spies. They have them as sex slaves. They have them uh, as, as basically uh, drug runners. Uh, and, of course, because they're multiple personalities, they're not aware of them being controlled. They're completely separated personalities. So they don't know what's going on in what how the system is using them. But there are some pretty high-profile. Kathy O'Brien is one of them. But there's a whole bunch of... Uh, Taylor Bryce, um, there's, a, there's a whole bunch that have come out. I, I recently referred to quite a bit in, in a recent article, chapter, uh, a medical doctor named Dr. Sue Arrigo, and she uh, uh, worked in, she was basically a sex slave and a spy uh, and uh, a remote viewer for the government for she had this psychic ability in remote viewing, and she worked with uh, uh, naval operations uh, intelligence, and and, uh, and she was a, an operative in the CIA. She was the assistant to all the directors, you know, for like four or five of them, uh, and, and she's uh, she has been you know vetted and, and she's for real, and she uh, she talks about. This system that they're able to traffic. I mean, they have wars basically. In addition to you know the bankers making a lot of money and the military industrial complex, you know, having all their weapons and selling and making more money. It all goes together. I mean, the movement of the arms, the movement of you know wars, the movement of these little children, the movement of the sex slaves, the movement of the drugs, the movement of the money laundering. Uh, it, it all goes together, uh, and it's a huge, huge, trillion, multi-trillion dollar operation. Uh, it's where black op budget comes from, basically. The government, they're doing all this. Uh, and, and basically we're talking about the Bush and the Clinton, the Obama, that dynasty that's got, been in there really since the JFK assassination. So... I saw the number in your book that, that you actually said $99 billion market for the sex trafficking. The full-blown black budget is trillions once you start counting in money laundering and drugs and organ trafficking and all sorts of other things. Now, specifically the $100 billion, I'm going to round it up to $100 billion, the $100 billion market for sex trafficking. How much of that is underage children and how much of that is the ritual satanic abuse done by the elites? Well, most of the traffic, human trafficking, the slaves that are currently, and there's more slaves now on this planet than there ever was during the slave era from the 1500s up to past the Civil War. There's like six times the number combined of the, that whole era of African slaves being brought over. Uh, it, it's, it's something like 36 million people right now on this earth are slaves. And about four fifths of them are sex slaves. And of the four fifths, over half are children. So we're talking a whole lot of children, millions of children. I mean, every year there's at least 800, and the numbers have been rising. These are old statistics, so you know that it's even more than the last quoted. But it's something of 
800,000 missing children in America alone each year, and up to 8 million in the world of missing children yearly. So this is a massive, massive operation being operated by large governments, and it's mainly, I would say, in the West. It's, it's mostly America as the military empire, but it's got its connections and headquarters. There is the city of London, basically, that's the economic center of the world. There's Brussels, which is the home of the NATO and the European Union. And there is Rome, which is the Vatican and the Pope. And they're all in it together. Okay, so is it just a market that we decided we were going to dominate? I mean, I know it's terrible, but is it just that we're dominating the market, but the world participates in this? Because I do know that Saudi Arabia and other parts of the world, China, they get involved quite heavily in uh, child abuse, sexual yeah. child abuse. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's global. I mean, the, the Western nations are probably the leaders in it, but no, it involves China and it involves um, Saudi Arabia and other Gulf states. Uh, I mean, there's, quote, bad people everywhere, you know. They're, they're, I think they're in a low percentage compared to the good people, but there are bad people all over this earth, and the bad ones seem to gravitate to this kind of operation. Yeah, and we just have a problem right now where they're the ones, they got their whole network going, and it's locked in, and they got the people in power under their thumb. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's, it's been a blackmail system. Uh, for a long time, too. Uh, I mean, and, and, and it goes back. I mean, Hoover, J. Edgar Hoover was tracking everybody's personal life. I mean, look at his own personal life. You know, he was a transvestite, homosexual, and a pedophile. Uh, and he had the dirt on everybody else. I mean, it, it's, it's been going on a long, long time in America and in Europe and England, especially. Um, and it's a means of control over the people, I mean, not only the masses of control, but, but over the leaders, basically, in the government, in the high positions in the court system, you know, and it's a means of control as much as these sickos get off on little kids. I mean, that has to be part of it, but, but it's also control mechanism. Because there's so many people involved, and it's so big, is that why there's access to a lot of evidence and facts right now and people are coming out because your book has a lot of detail and a lot of examples and facts in it is that how you're getting at it do you think yeah i mean i when you talk about stuff like this i mean it's, it's horrible as, as pedophilia is you better back it up you have to back it up with some pretty decent sources, and, and so a, a lot of my research involves finding solid sources that are credible. That's a huge part of this whole enterprise that I'm doing, because uh, you've got to back it up, and that's why I have so many endnotes. Uh, I mean, almost every other statement is, is uh, complete with another endnote. Um, but yeah, that, that's what I have to do. If I'm going to basically do an A through Z encyclopedia on this topic uh, from the ancient to the present, uh, you know, I've got to back all of that up. And it, I would venture to say probably it's going to be the most comprehensive uh, accounting of modern pedophilia that's perhaps even ever been written. So I hope that it reaches a lot of people, obviously, because I think it is our best shot, I've said this many times, I think it's our best shot to finally hold the crime cabal that's been in control for a long time accountable. This is our best mean, because you talk about corruption, everybody knows that the governments have been corrupt forever, basically. I mean, that's nothing new. That's not going to get them off their ass from watching TV, you know. But... When you talk about what they're doing to these children and how they've managed to get away with it for as long as they have, 
in the great numbers of victims that they've had, uh, this is what gets the wrath and the outrage in people who want to be activists to basically demand change and to start holding those in, quote, power accountable. And so I really, really do hope that, and, and you see it right now, just, you know, with the whole Hollywood situation, with the Weinstein situation and Kevin Spacey, and and now it's uh, John Conyers and, and Al Franken and Charlie Rose and all of these fixtures in our government and entertainment industry that have all this power that they've abused. And what we're seeing now, all of these, Kevin Spacey actually is a pedophile, but the rest of them, they probably are too, but we just haven't gotten around to discovering that part of their, their abusive world. But what's coming are the pedophiles that we know about that are household names. I believe, now seeing is believing, because, you know, we've heard stuff before that they're going to arrest, a, you know, like, it, it, it's like back in February of this year, they were saying Chuck Schumer, John McCain, Lindsey Graham, uh, you know, the California senator, uh, you know, a whole bunch of them uh, were supposed to get, you know, arrested, and it hasn't happened. And we also hear that Trump is arresting under his administration. The number of arrests have surged. I mean, back in Obama and previously, the number of arrests for pedophilia operations was down in the hundreds or 450 or something like that during Obama years. And then all of a sudden it, it's hit, it's over 3,000 now. And it, you hear about all these busts that are going on, all these trafficking rings all over the world, really. Uh, and, and so I think there is some concrete evidence that we are making headway at holding at least those in the lower rungs of power accountable. Um, yeah, because we're I, not sure if it's getting to the top rungs, but I suppose yeah. getting the lower rungs is better than nothing, but we got to get to the people who are actually orchestrating it and implementing it so that we can eradicate it, or at least to a... <laughs> I think the way to go is Truth and Reconciliation Commission. That that way, we will hold those accountable at the top that have been running these horrible operations. We will hold them accountable, but the lower one, ones will be the ones that talk about who is pretty much running the show. And if we basically give them an out where they're protected, and, and to some extent immune from, you know, some kind of consequence other than, you know, having to live with whatever. See, the lower ones probably have a little bit of conscience. As you go up, those people don't have a conscience. And they're the full-blown psychopath, which is a mental disorder. And, uh, and, and those are the ones that we need to, to, to get. If we're going to stop this global operation, obviously, we need to remove the people that are behind it from power. That, that's a, a given. It goes without saying, basically. So I, I think it's coming. Um, I mean, supposedly, uh, Mueller, the special prosecutor, uh, has turned the tables. Basically, Trump may have done a coup, basically, with, uh, Mueller was basically part of the co-conspirators of 911, the FBI director and all that. Very corrupt. Uh, and a protector of, of pedophilia, if not one himself. And supposedly with this whole uranium thing that uh, Hillary and her husband were involved in, giving away 20% of the uranium deposits of America, in America to the Russians, uh, basically what I understand and, and hope is actually happening is that the tables have turned and, and there are these indictments that are going that are forthcoming, uh, but it's it's not against Trump, and you know it's it's against basically the people that have been in power for a while, uh, which is basically this whole dynasty of the Clinton and, and the, could, the Obamas. Could it be against Bush. Trump and his people? Well, I I have heard he ran 
with Jeffrey Epstein. And you know he's a convicted pedophile, um, the Florida guy that has a mansion in the Caribbean. That he, that was a big blackmail operation, Mossad operation, basically, uh, where they were getting prime ministers and presidents. Clinton went down there 26 times on the flight log of his Lolita Express, and, and Hillary went like at least six. Uh, supposedly there is a film caught of of uh, Hillary involved with Uma Abedin and a minor, a girl, underage. Um, supposedly there's all this evidence uh, that's in the, on that Wiener laptop that had, copies have been made and, and the New York police have it, the FBI obviously has it. Uh, so yeah, I mean, I want to see some of the, the, the big rotten fruit start falling from the tree uh, and then I will believe that but yeah, getting back to the point about Trump, he ran in the same social circle with Jeffrey Epstein. He was quoted in the mag New York Magazine saying, oh yeah, he's my buddy. Uh, this is of course before Jeffrey got busted. Uh, but he said, oh, and this is quoted from Trump. Oh, he likes the young ones. So Trump knew about what was going on. He knew that this guy was a pedophile. And supposedly there is a possibility that he is compromised, uh, you know. Um, so we'll see how it plays out. Uh, well, let, let's talk about Putin. Putin warned the United States recently that if they don't get their act together, we will come out and share who the pedophiles are. Can you talk about that and what they specifically said? He stopped, he stopped the, uh, the adoption of uh, Russian children, like, I think it was a year and a half ago, a while back. And then in the last two, three months, he actually uh, came out with statements and, and, uh, and his, uh, foreign minister also made overtures that, you know, America needs to get its act together with this pedophilia epidemic. Uh, and, and yeah, I mean, the intelligence, the Russian intelligence has the good, the dirty goods on all these people. And uh, and he did kind of give an ultimatum for America to come clean with its pedophilia problem, and uh, so I think that also might be behind this this movement. So he specifically also, he specifically said, "You better come clean, or we will make it happen by coming forward and and laying out your dirty yeah. laundry." Yeah, I believe that's that's part of the reason why it is coming out. Now. Because he, you know, forcefully kind of pressured the uh, people in power. To That's start great. Who need to do? Uh, yeah, I mean, this man's been a voice of reason uh, for years now. And I mean, look at the way the neocon U.S. government has been trying to demonize the, this guy for so long. But he's a master chess player and, and knows how to outwit and outsmart all of them. And, and his relative, very honest, compared to the American government. Well, what's crazy is it's so bad right now, the, the corruption, that the mob or somebody else seems really good in comparison, you know? And that's, that's when we just have to step in, up and say enough is enough. I know we have a lot of leaders in this country, local leaders too, step up and say, okay, you know, we might have some side deal with drugs going on, but this is not okay. And we need to shut this down. Mm -hmm. I think we're in, we're in a movement. It's starting to turn, and, uh, and I think better things will come. I, I, I do believe that. I want to believe it, and I do believe it. I think there is enough out there as evidence to see that we're moving in the better direction than any time prior. Well, and when you start looking at just our problems, you know, in a big sense, I mean, uh, the, you know, the children is one, which is absolutely horrendous. But then we have our health problems where every d disease and issue is just skyrocketing. And then we have our food issues. We have, I mean, it's just thing after thing after thing, which is showing that we have, I mean, we have a major issue, and it all stems from just not, it, from the corruption. It all stems from the corruption and ha not having ethical conscience in our leadership. Right. Well, there, there, 
they were called internationalists a hundred years ago. They are the globalists now, same thing, basically. And their vision for, you know, at least a century now has been a one world government. And they use the Hegelian dialectic of identifying a problem that usually is of their, of their own making, uh, and then manipulating, engineering a reaction that's always negative and fearful for the people. And then they introduce their authoritarian solution that only increases their tyranny and control over the mass. And they've been doing this and doing it the same operation over and over the whole thing about all the terrorism. The terrorists, the quote, Middle Eastern terrorists, the ISIS, and Al-Qaeda, and all, that's all a U.S. creation. It's an empire. It's the same people that have pedophiles, the Saudi Arabian princes. They're arresting a whole bunch of them there. That's a good sign, too. Um, so, yeah, I mean, they've been at this for a long time, and, and they want absolute control over the world population. They want to call the population from 7.5 billion down to maybe between a half and one billion. I mean, this has been their goal for a long time. So that's why, you know, if they have their way, there's death and destruction everywhere. So and what, how do you I, think they're going to... The whole population is just, they've had enough, and they want it to stop. And I think they're turning the corner. Well, how do you think they really were ch are trying to implement this depopulation agenda? Because I've seen that, you know, the stones, the, uh, what are those called? The, and, and I mean, we hear it everywhere. It's written all over the place. There's all these documents and all these things. You know, I didn't believe it at first, but then I people started showing me all these things and said, wow, you know, it, it's hard. It's cognitive dissonance, right? I mean, even if you see all of it, it's hard to believe that they're trying to do this. But how do you think they're going to go, they really want to depopulate? Because war doesn't do it. I mean, it, it does some of it, but it doesn't depopulate to the point that they're no. trying to get to. Yeah. They've developed many different ways. I, I wrote an article, this is probably two years ago now, uh, on the fast kill, which is like war, and the slow kill. And they've got many methods of slow kill operation. Uh, they do it with the geoengineering, raining down on, on of heavy metals, toxic metals uh, that are in our food supply and in our blood, in our brains. Uh, it dumbs us down. It makes us more docile and more easily manipulated and controlled, less critical thinking and, and you know. Um, so and we've actually seen the lifespan of Americans starting to go down. Uh, you know, here we the medical advances all of the last century have been so great. Well, the effects of their slow kill methods are kicking in to the point where the lifespan is now in decline. Uh, but doesn't and, it and affect that, them too? Well. Obviously, they have to breathe the same air. So yes, I mean, to some extent, it has to affect them. Uh, I, I know that Monsanto people have all the natural foods, even in their little dining areas, uh, and yet they poison the planet. You're They're kidding me. So Monsanto has all organic stuff internally for their own employees, uh, but yeah. they sell the other crap. Yeah. Huh. And of course, then they bought the governments off so that people can't even take them to court. Um, so yeah, I mean, it's this control and, and the corruption and, and the, basically they, the fluoride, I mean, you, you name it, I mean, the vaccines, I mean, they're killing a lot of people now. Uh, and then they got these psychotronic weapons where, you know, there's the heart, where they beam the electrons off the uh, ionosphere and, and it creates uh, unnatural disasters, hurricanes, volcanoes. Uh, Earthquakes. See, I uh, see it. I see it creating chaos and a lot of sick people, but I don't see it creating depopulation. I see it creating just a lot of sick people and chaos, which is well, not a have, good have, position have to be in. War. They got biological and chemical warfare, I, and, and you know, God forbid that they release some kind of very toxic biological agent that, that kills a lot of people. But that 
they've been developing them for many years now. I mean, Ebola was one. You even say that AIDS was is one that they created. Uh, so they have that. They have such a huge arsenal of different weapons that they can use uh, mass destructive weapons. Uh, many, many. So you know, and and I also think that they've been work, they've been planning for the economy to implode. I mean, we know that it's been a house of cards and they've been propping it up with, you know, exchange stabilization funds. They've been dark money, basically, to prop prop the U.S. dollar up. You know, that's all coming to an end, though. I mean, the world is, is pretty much weaning itself off the U.S. dollar. A little bit less control the empire has now. The BRICS alliance, you know, and the, the Chinese infrastructure bank, I mean, a lot of the jumping on that, you know, that's the future. I mean, their economy isn't, isn't so great right now either. It's slowing down, but, but it's far more stable than, than Western economies. And, and I believe that as they are being exposed, they're stepping up both the terrorist kind of activity like the Vegas shooting and, and you know on and on with that kind of crap. It's all false flag by the government. But they're they're really afraid because the people are catching on. They they've been exposed. The pedophiles are, are being exposed like never before. And they know that there's going to be a global wrath towards those in power that have been abusing humanity for too long. And that's why we're seeing everything step up. The pace of events, of destabilizing events this year. I mean, it's 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 been ratcheting up every year. But uh, I think basically 2018 is going to play itself out with major, major stuff. Of course, we say that every year, but it gets worse. Every year. Well, but what's so interesting is is that they're not even trying to hide things anymore. You know, like the. Right. Israel making the people in towns in Texas put Israel first before they can get aid. I mean, there's so many things that are just out there and not even hidden. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that just tells you how brazen and smug they are in their power. That they do, they feel like they are, they have impunity. That there's nothing that the people, the little people can do to, uh, but I do think that through the internet, that's another thing that they're, they're, you know, the net neutrality is supposedly on its way out. They're going to make it harder for uh, all of us to access, at least free access to uh, all the information available on the internet. And they're going to, they, I mean, they know that they have to shut down the flow of information and news. And that's the whole thing, the fake news that out with last year and it's information is then, information is the most important thing to keep free right. the most important right. thing i did a interview just um the, the show right before this one on autism and, and dr rivera has has actually cured um almost 300 kids clinically cured autism and thousands and thousands of kids have gotten better um, yeah, we'd like to see the number be a lot more than, I think it's like 270 or something, 269. I don't know. We'd like to see it a lot higher than that, but the other, the mainstream have done zero. But my point is, is that she has information on her website and there are certain areas in the UK and in this country where it's blocked by the government. Said, I'm sorry, but this is, you can't get to the site. <laughs> it's off limits. And so we're trying to figure out if it is it browser based or is it country based. But yeah, and so there are a lot of sites that are being shut down or not. You're blocked. Yeah, yeah, they're making it harder and harder uh, for people to speak the truth, to be free, to exercise their First Amendment rights, uh, and to have access to the truth. It's becoming more difficult. They know that that's their biggest threat: is that people become aware. And then outrage and demand change. Uh, so they're moving to shut things down. They're moving to step up a war. Um, 
and they're moving to basically implode the economy. That's what's coming. Well, you're about half done with your book, and the first half is available. Uh, can you tell us where that's available? And then when do you anticipate the rest of it becoming available? Yeah. It's been slow going, but you know, when you. It's a lot of work. Document every other sentence, every other sentence. Yeah, it's a lot of work. Um, okay, it can be available for free. I, I want to make sure that there is our channels that are available so every person can read uh, it for free. Uh, and the free uh, way to go is uh, tinyurl.com slash pedo empire. Uh, Robert David Steele has it on his 5 Daddy the IOTA site. Uh, but that's that's basically the the way to get to this short URL link. Um, it, you can also go to my website. Uh, I have a blog blog site, uh, empireexposed.blogspot.com, and all my material is there for free. I also have it on uh, Amazon uh, Kindle. Each chapter is 99 cents, so it's very affordable. Uh, and, uh, you know, so it's, it's going to be available, uh, hopefully, as wide as possible uh, for readership. I anticipate finishing it uh, probably by the end of March. Um, I am working on a chapter right now on finders, the finder scandal from the 1980s. Um, yeah, have you ever heard about that one? Finder. Basically, that's it's one of it's, it's actually the shortest chapter so far. It's only going to be about ten pages. I've written forty, fifty page chapters. Uh, but Finder was actually a CIA front company called Finders uh, that basically were procurers of children and movers in the global trafficking. Of children, and they got busted. Uh, there, two guys in their uh, uh, in their late twenties were with six kids. They were dressed in a suit, all fancy dancy, and the kids were all dirty and, and had insect bites all over them. They were not being properly cared for. They were in a park, so uh, anonymous callers called the police and said something real strange is going on here and uh, you, you need to check it out. Well, obviously they, they were uh, being abused with neglect and also they determined that the two older of the six kids were sexually abused as well. They were part of, and that's how they found out about this finders group. Uh, it's, you know, they call it a call, uh, but really, they, and they tried to pass it off as like a 60s commune type cult. Uh, but actually, it was a front company for the CIA in the movement of, of little kids, and it was international, too. Back in 1987, they had satellites and, and computers. And, and I mean, the average American didn't have a personal computer in their home till like, the mid-90s or early 90s. So this is 1987, and they all had the computer act, the high technology. It was a front for the, the CIA. And, and they got busted, and uh, and then they had U.S. Customs because they were going to Mexico. They told the police they were going to Mexico to start a school for brilliant kids, and um, so U.S. Customs uh, they have a pornography uh, section in their in their agency, so they got involved, and they were going to be traveling to another country internationally. So they got involved, and and the uh, the officer wrote a report, a five-page report, saying that they confiscated, they went to the locations, and this was in Washington, D.C. They had a warehouse in Washington, D.C., and then they had a, a house. Uh, and they, they went in with search warrants and confiscated so much evidence that was so conclusive and overwhelming that, in fact, it was a CIA front running a drug uh, no. Well, they were probably doing that too, but it was a child trafficking operation. And no sooner did this all come out, the Washington Post ran an article, New York Times ran an article. Within a week, 
the investigation was shut down. It happened in Tallahassee where they found these kids and you know, the two adults in the park. And it went back to D.C. where they came from, this, where the headquarters of this operation was going. And amazingly enough, it happened in the same city, Washington, D.C., of course, 30 years later, Pizzagate, uh, Pedogate, and also the Franklin scandal. Now, and that's my next chapter after this one. Uh, and the Franklin scandal is the biggest documented pedophile scandal in American history. That's, it went from and, and the that Catholic... One, can, can you hold a second? And that oh. one, there's a lot of information out there. But just to give us an idea, that is just the tip of the iceberg, right? There's a lot like that. This one just happened to get out there. Right, right. There's a whole bunch. I mean, Belgium had the Detroit affair that involved the parliament and the judges. England, oh, for God. I mean, the Ireland and Scotland, they are. I mean, the, the free nations totally control those countries. And, and uh there's the Westminster, there's the Isle of Wight, there's the Ireland one. They're just so steep in uh, pedophilia. Uh, it's really sickening. But America is just about as bad, pretty much. But there are so many. And, uh, and so, yes, I'm doing a chronology now of all the major pedophile scandals since basically 30 years ago. And, and, you know, you talk about evidence. I mean, and it's all the same players over and over and over. The same Bushes, same Clinton, same people, uh, you know, in power and, and all the players. They're all the same. The secret societies, the Malta, Knights, and Freemasons, the Illuminati, they're all in it. They're all in it. So can you briefly talk about what, what chapters you're covering? And what's left to be covered? Yeah. I'm going to go to my little comments right now. Okay. Um, so what I'm doing now is, is, is obviously two major ones from the 80s. The, the Finder scandal that I'm finishing up on right now. And then the big one is the Franklin scandal that involved these are little kids in the Catholic Mickey Rooney Boys Town. Remember the Mickey Rooney movie, Boys Town? It was a classic in the 50s, I think, when he was a little kid. He was a Boys Town juvenile delinquent, supposedly. Anyway, they shipped the kids from Catholic orphanage of Boys Town right into the White House with the Reagan and Bushes uh, of the 80s. But So that's the next chapter. Then I move on to Jeffrey Epstein. Uh, that was this century, basically. He got busted in 2005, and he was involved in a blackmail operation down there on the Caribbean island, St. James. Uh, and boy, that tells you a lot, because it, all the players uh, are guilty in that one. Uh, and Kevin Spacey was another writer on the Lolita Express. Um, and, and then we have the Hollywood scandal. I mean, look at what's going on in the pedophiles rule Hollywood, and they have for a long time. Uh, so that's another chapter. We have the Penn State and sports pedophilia scandals. There's soccer pedophilia scandals. There's uh, gymnastic, girls' gymnastic pedophilia scandals. There's the Penn State, you know, Coach Sandusky one. And, and they're all linked. They're all linked. That's another thing. They're not just isolated, you know. You know they're totally linked and controlled by the central forces behind all of this. And I think that's an important link, because if it's just random sickos, then, you know, it is what it is. It's people, and we're going to just have to combat it as we go. But once you know that it's a controlled network of powerful people, it becomes a whole nother ball game. Right. right. Then I move on to the European scandals. As I mentioned, the Dutro affair in, in, in Belgium and number of them in the UK and, uh, and the ones in Australia, they're pretty much everywhere. Uh, but I'll do a little rundown in the, in the major European ones. Uh, then I, I move into uh, basically talk about how they've gotten away with it for so long. Because they have the foxes guarding the hen house. That's the whole deal. They're, as I mentioned before, they're, they're in the child welfare system, they're in the courts, they're they're in the government, they're in law enforcement. In every domain, 
they are the, the, the major players are are part of this group, the pedophile group. Uh, so I talk about that, and I talk about you know the child welfare system, the group homes, the orphanages, the the runaways that are, are and the missing children, and, and, the, and the national missing children's bureau, uh, which is also part of it. By the way, Laura Silsby, who was actually a convicted height uh, kidnapper of children, who's a cohort of Hillary Clinton when she was Secretary of State, she was bailing this woman out. She was a uh, Busted down in Haiti trying to get into the Dominican Republic with 33 children. Uh, so, and now she's working for the company that does the Amber Alert under a different name or her husband's name. So, you know, you see the same people, you know, in all of these different operations. And, and that's how they're getting away with it because all the people in control that can, especially in law enforcement in the court, when there's a conscientious, honest cop that's actually busting the pedophiles. They only go so far. Once they start getting up there in, in power, the the guilty ones, they start that all of a sudden it's shut down. Just like the one that I talked about with the, with the finders scandal. They, the Department of Justice shut it down. It's an internal CIA, uh, you know, issue, uh, internal affair. Uh, so that's how they do it. They, they have the foxes guarding the hen house. And I, I then move on to, and this is the final part of the book, where I, I talk about, uh, my friend Robert David still got into trouble because he mentioned the, the bringing the kids out to, to Mars and, and uh, the, the uh, space colonies and, and having the slaves out there. Uh, but, I believe that there are, well, first of all, we know that there are space programs that we're not being told about. NASA is just Mickey Mouse as far as this. They've then been able to do reverse technology and re reverse engineering. So they have the access that, the, you know, from falling UFO crashes. They, I mean, back in the Nazis got a hold of this stuff before World War II. So, yeah, they have the technology. And they are doing space colonies out there. <clears throat> That's one of the outs. As the elite destroys the surface of the earth and pretty much all the life on it, uh, they think they live with this delusion that they can just go underground. They got underground cities, underground continental transport systems, everything. They've been building this now for 50 years. And so everything is in place so that they think if they even have a nuclear holocaust, right at the surface level, they can survive underground or out in the space colony. So I get, I'm going to touch on, on some of that stuff and the UFOs and disclosure and all of this stuff. And of course, I, I talk about, I have to talk about the thing that kicked this whole thing off that got me into basically writing about pedophilia was Pizzagate. I started writing about that, you know, back in the beginning of December was my first article. I wrote about six or seven articles. And then I was approached by, first I was approached by Jim Fesser. You know, he's a, he's a great researcher and, and you know, activist and, and he's very knowledgeable. He's written many books, starting with the JFK assassination, the Newtown, Connecticut mass shooting. And he's done every single one of books. He's, he's done a really good job. And, and so I, I've been friends with him and he approached me to write a book based on my article. And then Robert David Steele approached me about two months later. Uh, so I don't, and by that time I was already starting to talk about chapters. Uh, so I think with the background of being a therapist, of working with pedophiles, uh, for many years and having the compassion and the drive of a spiritual warrior to uncover and expose the evil out there, uh, and, and being a journalist now, and, alternative news for four years now. I've written several hundred articles, uh, Global Research, uh, Lou Rockwell, SOT.net, and then they get picked up from a lot of other sites. Um, so yeah, I'm the, I'm the guy that's going to put it all together and, and put this book out there. Uh, I, I just hope my book gets out there before the, you know, 
thing hits the fan, you know. I, well, I what, hope that. well, what I want to say is how are you keeping yourself safe? Because the, um, the banker, the Dutch banker, um, he came out and you cover this in your book and then he was found dead just a few months ago, right? Oh, the guy, uh, the Belgian guy. No, actually, that was a, a false story that they put out there. He actually is alive. Oh, he is. Uh, okay. Born. So that wasn't a true uh, story. Yeah. Well, it was a true story as far as the Illuminati that he ran with, you know, in the high stakes at the top uh, of all the movement of the terrible things that they're doing. Uh, that all is true. And those were tears that were very genuine that he shared, shed on, on that interview too. Uh, but as far as his death, them killing him in Florida, no, that was false. Okay, so he's he's okay. Well, that's good because it's important that people who are telling the truth are not being taken out. Okay, so right. I want you to stick around and and do a Patreon only content, you know, for the people who support me, which I appreciate so much and expand on the space issues and also on you believe that the elites are controlled by an outside force which because it's very hard for us to understand how they could just do these things and so you're going to expand on that for patreon so i appreciate so people who want to hear that content please go to my patreon account and support me it's it's there's different tiers so it's not very expensive but um Thank you so much for joining us today, and I will make sure that your website is um, clearly up there on how to get your book. And again, everybody, it's for free. We want to get that out to as many people as possible. All right. Well, thank you, Sarah, for giving me the opportunity to talk about this stuff.